Hey, this is Eric. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today about the Commodore VIC-20. This was my first home computer. Um, I got my first VIC-20, I think it was 1983. Uh, might have been 82, 83. I think it was 83. I got it for my birthday. Um, my parents didn't have a lot of money, so I was very surprised to actually get it after I asked for it. Um, it, it really did, um, it really did change my whole perspective in life about computers. We had just received computers at our junior high school. Um, they were TRS 80s and Apple IIs and it really piqued my interest. So when I asked for that, I think my parents, um, Thought it would be a good idea to get a home computer, so this is what they got me. Not this particular one. Um, I found this one locally at a, there was a storage company that I think was auctioning off or, or really just selling things people had left behind. And so downtown Sacramento, I, I found it in the, I think it was Craigslist or something like that. It was 20 bucks. This is one of, this is an older Vic 20. Um, you can tell by the gold label on there. See the, the little gold labels on that? Um, you can tell that this is very similar to the way the Commodore 64 looks. They used a very similar case, uh, different cutouts in the back. Um, one thing I always found pretty interesting about the Commodore VIC-20 is that it only had one control port for a joystick. As you can see, there's the, this is the, um, See here, I'm going backwards. This is the power button over here. Uh, but it only had one joystick port, which I always found kind of interesting. Didn't matter to me. Uh, there were two player games on the VIC-20. One person would have to use the keyboard instead of the joystick. Um, but this really, um, this was my first home computer. I, when I first got it, I didn't have any um, storage devices. There were no, I didn't have a disk drive, I didn't have anything. So I would get the magazines like Computes Gazette and Run, uh, which were Commodore magazines. I would type in the games. I would play them for a few days. And then when I powered off my VIC-20, the game was gone. And I remember I had would have a friend come over and we would alternate typing the games in. Um, just, you know, such a great experience. And then eventually I saved my money up from doing chores in the neighborhood. And I got this. This is a Commodore data set, um, C2N cassette player. Um, even has an old cassette in it. I got this one off of eBay, I think. Um, and then I was able to, when I typed in the programs and games out of a magazine, I was able to save them finally, which was nice. Um, I never had a floppy disk drive, even though it was compatible with the 20. I didn't, I didn't have that until later on when I got my Commodore 64. Um, I, I did use that data set, the, the cassette player and recorder with my Commodore 64 for a little while. Um, but the main thing for the VIC-20 was the cartridges. Um, they go into this very large, the cartridges on the VIC-20 are, are very large. This is the cartridge port right here. Um, I'll, I'll show you. I only have one. I have one cartridge for my VIC-20 and it is called the VIC Mega Cart. Um, see the little reset button on the top? Um, the Mega Cart is a uh, cartridge that has I think almost every VIC-20 commercial release on it, as well as VIC-20 memory expansions, um, utilities, all sorts of things. But in the VIC, the cartridges just plug right into the back like that. And um, I do remember having a ton of cartridges for the VIC-20. Um, my favorite one of all time, which is what I'll play next, was a game called Omega Race, which to me had amazing graphics and gameplay for a VIC-20. You know, the VIC-20 only had 5K of RAM, so the games, especially by today's standards, were very rudimentary. Um, 
very basic sound. Uh, but Omega Race looked like an arcade game. It was um, pretty amazing. So I'll play that as soon as this video is done. But I remember my, I guess my fondest, I have two really great memories of the VIC-20. One was um, the first game, or, or one of the first games I ever typed in was a game called Looper. And I had my best friend come over. We took turns typing it in. And it was a very simple game where you flew a little... Um, airplane and you could basically just loop and control the and you had to swing fly down grab a key grab it and um, and then drop it off somewhere or something like that um, but it took us it took us I remember my friend came over spent the night we typed it we spent the whole night typing it in and that was before I had the, the data set so we could not turn the computer off and we left my computer I think my Vic 20 was on for about a week straight maybe two weeks and he would come over every day and we would play this game um, you know that was a very good memory I actually found that game again on the internet downloaded it and played it on the Vic 20 it was uh, very nostalgic and then my second really good memory of the Vic 20 was um, there was a flight simulator for it called IFR, which was just, it was for instrument flying only, since it was very basic. Uh, but I remember I mail ordered that, and it didn't come for, I think, two months. Like, it was uh, eight weeks or ten weeks. Uh, but I remember waiting for that every day, and every day I came home from school, I'd ask my mom, hey, did that game come in? And I start, was starting to get worried that they took my money. But once I got it, I loved it. And I mean, you should see this thing. You can look it up on YouTube. It's called IFR on the VIC-20. Very basic. All you see are the instrument dials. And you, you basically are just flying by instrument. But, you know, coupled with the imagination of a seventh grader, it really felt like I was flying. It was an amazing game. Um, but I'd collected many games. Gorf was one that I liked a lot. Gorf from the arcade. Um, Omega Race was my favorite game of all time on the VIC-20. Um, there, the, it, 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 the, the games were a lot of fun, even for a rudimentary system. I had the VIC-20 from 83, 83 and 84, and then I remember, I think it was the Christmas of 84, I actually received a Commodore 64 um, for Christmas, and you know, it, 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 that was night and day difference between uh, between that and the VIC-20. A lot more RAM, a lot more game options. Um, I still had the data set, the tape recorder to, to use with the Commodore 64, but um, eventually I did odd jobs and this and that and eventually got the money to buy the 1541 floppy drive. Um, but anyway, amazing machine, the VIC-20. I'm going to play Omega Race next. Um, and uh, just to show you one of the best games on the system. Uh, if you have any questions about the VIC-20 hardware, just let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks. So here's the game Omega Race on the VIC-20. Uh, this was uh, probably my all-time favorite game on the VIC-20. Um, amazing graphics for the system. Um, you know, most graphics on the VIC-20 were pretty rudimentary, fun, but pretty rudimentary. But this one had what I would say would be high-res graphics, um, fun gameplay. I always was a big Asteroids fan, um, the style of game uh, with Asteroids. Um, but this one was awesome, had it all. So here is Omega Race.
is the my favorite game on the vic 20 that is omega race uh there's a version for it for the commodore 64 as well um if you have that system but anyway thanks for watching uh if you have any questions on the vic 20 or any of the games uh leave a question in the comments thanks <laughs>